Welcome to this week's review of Mashal, Magic and Muscle, Chapter 67 Mash Bernadette and the Four Diamond Rings. This week's chapter brings with it what seems to be the end of Mash's fight with Cell War and possible Mash's greatest speed feat to date. The chapter starts off from where we left last chapter, Cell War summoning the divine power of Hephaestus the god of iron from within his wand and in full color no less. The wand itself takes on the form of an estimated foot long white cylinder shaped portion of wood where Cell War places his hand while out of either end of the cylinder, into winding black vines with thorns resembling a rose spread out before splitting off and attaching onto four large discs. Mash is understandable confused as this is not only the second time, he has seen a wand awaken in this manner and not only that, but no one has ever explained this procedure to him, if it is even common knowledge at all rather than being some kept secret from the general public. Cell War, like stereotypical villain he is explains to Mash that this is actually his wand's true form, and that magic can evolve in countless ways depending on who wields it and how they do so. This immediately makes me think that two people could have the very same starting position with the same magic but they could both develop something completely different, take Lance for example his magic revolves around gravity, increasing it to crush his enemies but someone else could do the opposite, instead decreasing gravity to cause their enemies to float helplessly into the air, that's how I understand what we are being told. Of course, Mash doesn't seem to understand this and Cell War isn't up for just standing around, so he sends out two of the discs with a yell of diamond cutter, presumably attack's name, Mash manages to nimbly leap between them avoiding getting sliced up, however the building behind him isn't so lucky, much to Mash's annoyance complaining about how his school was being damaged. Cell War once again as villains do explains his power, telling Mash that those discs are tipped with diamonds so they can cut through anything and not only that they will hunt him down till he is cut into pieces. We see this in action as they come flying back and manage to nick Mash's left cheek leaving a small bloody gash. Presumable these aren't just some kind of regular diamond but rather magical super sharp diamond blades otherwise I don't see why Mash couldn't just smash them with his bare fists something which mind you he doesn't even attempt so maybe he realized it would be futile or maybe he really doesn't think he could shatter diamonds despite his already superhuman showings. So, Mash is forced to keep dodging around the discs as they keep flying at him from different directions, not seeming to be capable of catching him but being troublesome either way. As a result, Mash makes the choice to head straight for Cell War but as he does so the disc comes flying at him again and he only just manages to avoid it as it rips his shirt open and as he leans to the side allowing the blades to pass either side of him. Mash showing off his brains realizes that despite the assault he is already under Cell War is still holding back keeping two of the four discs beside him as a defensive mechanism and Mash laments that four is too too many. Cell War seems to believe that he has managed to unnerve Mash, asking him if he is scared but instead of giving him a chance to answer, instead Cell War begins to threaten everyone else who is still trapped in the time stop. He does this by summoning a sphere made of spikes, which he calls Black Diamond. Mash deadpanned as ever responding without any actual fear that Cell War is just full of tricks, which he most certainly is given how he has survived the most hits from Mash to date. Cell War, unable to contain himself or his arrogance continues to speak with Mash rather than just full committee to a full-on assault. He speaks on how, a wand unleashed by a summon spell, perhaps implying there are other ways, does not just increase the wand own power but also increases the amount of magic power which an individual can unleash. He then goads Mash, saying how the diamond shards will impale all the people below call them wastes of space, while also questioning if Mash thought he had found a nice home for himself and if he liked the worthless hangers-on, and as we see all the people in the audience, we get a shot of a frozen lemon. Then Cell War gives a truly twisted smile as he declares that they are all going to die, which Mash surprising responds with what seems to be a casual agreement as he dodges between the blades yet again. Even if Mash is 100% certain he can defeat his opponent I would expect at least some level of concern for the people who are at risk. Cell War foolishly tells Mash to give up, 
which of course he is not going to do and as the discs close in on him, Mash spins around to look the other way, getting a small cut on his back for the effort before setting off in a full sprint away from the fight. This leaves the diamond-wielding mage stunned, questioning why Mash was running in the opposite direction, wondering if he was abandoning the students because he had Mash beat so he just gave up. Of course, that's not the case as Mash pops up right behind him and we get a ominous sight of Mash holding Cell Wall's shoulders while still having that chibi face. According to Mash, he circled the school in order to shake off the disc's chase. This only serves to shock Cell War even more, questioning on how fast he would need to be to outrun the disc and depending upon how much of the school he ran in that time, this might just be the fastest Mash has ever gone, perhaps only rivaled by his feats during the fight against Margaret. Cell War recognizes that Mash is trying to pull him down, which somehow he resists, once again proving he at the very least might be one of the top physical most powerful character in the series to date. However not losing his cool, he calls out Mash, saying that it was a shame he forgot what he could do and we get the sight of Cell War's skin taking on an angular stone-like shape resembling that of a diamond which is exactly what it is supposed to be, a diamond skin which H can't be broken through which I highly doubt that if push came to shove Mash couldn't break it as he has already demonstrated to have a talent for destroying supposedly unbreakable things. But as Mash is holding on to Cell War the discs are closing in on him and it seems that the Diamond Mage has forgotten the fact he was supposed to take Mash in alive as he fully intends to end Mash's life then and there. The next panel we see is a blacked out image of Mash being sliced into by the disc blood being sprayed everywhere while Cell War stands as the victor of this fight. Mash's body falls lifeless onto the ground, his eyes devoid of life and Cell War takes the moment to gloat as he grinds his foot into the corpse's face, yelling about how he was just another waste and how he's going to slice up his friends as well. But then everything gets thrown for a loop as Mash is replaced by a giant cream puff of all things, this understandable alarms and disorients Cell War who turns to see Mash holding a mass of cream puffs, speaking on having a cream puff party, yelling about how he killed Mash and how could he be alive. But Mash does not answer his question and instead just starts stuffing his mouth with one cream puff after another, choking him with them and causing him to start panicking and blacking out before the perspective changes to a badass sight of Mash choking out Cell War with one arm around his throat and the other clutching his head as the Diamond Mage mumbles incoherently about choking as his eyes roll back and he begins foaming at the mouth. And Mash just looks absolutely sick with his eyes sharpened and his one visible eye having no visible giving it a demonic looking appearance. From there we get an explanation of what actually happened, and it is actually pretty cool. When the diamond disc was about to hit him, Mash concluded that breaking through the diamond skin of his opponent would take too much time, so instead he decided to choke the bitch out. And as he was doing this Cell War began to hallucinate because of a lack of oxygen getting to his brain, he did all of that in less than a second, which is good because if it took any longer he really would have died or at least been seriously injured. And as Cell War falls to the ground unconscious and hopefully out of the fight for good, at least for now the giant spiked sphere begins to crumble away, hopefully turning to dust before it can hit anyone in the audience otherwise this might just turn into a tragedy. But anyway, Mash lets him go and gives a cool one-liner about how he cares a lot about the school so if he wants to destroy it he should be ready to get choked out, of course it would have been more impactful if his opponent was still conscious. But that is where the chapter ends, not really much to talk about in this chapter, no huge reveals just a straight up fight with some explanation of Cell War's powers and reaffirming that the power of a third liner and their awakened ones are in a completely different ball game compared to single and double liners, but honestly it's kind of funny that the first time we get to see a third liner in an all out fight they end up getting knocked out rather easily by Mash, owing to their own arrogance. But anyway, Next chapter hopefully we go back and see what's going on between Wahlberg and Father, get some insight to how things are going with our guys down in the arena and overall just give us an idea of how things are progressing outside of MASH and maybe even set up MASH's next opponent.
hopefully someone who can actually put some fear into Mash's heart for a change. Anyway, I have been the Anonymous Weeb, if you liked the video do not forget to like and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe and I wish you a good day or night wherever you are.